I'm working on this 1961 wheel horse model 401 in the last video I cleaned up the main part of the engine straightened up the starter screen and got that old muffler off of there This time I'll start with getting the sheet metal ready to bolt back on. There's quite a bit of rust in this flywheel cover and it don't fit in the vise very well. So I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to start bolting this stuff together. I didn't mess with the pull starter because it works good already. It looks like somebody worked on it and numbered the pieces before they took it apart. This bolt on the lower right side has to be shorter than the rest of them. If that bolt's too long, it'll hit the flywheel. I need to move the cover around to line up that last bolt hole, so I should have left the rest of these a little bit loose till I can get them all in. That's not fitting in there. I think it's because this corner's all mangled. The camera died there. This piece is about the right shape now, so that fits pretty good. This side piece doesn't fit that well. I think I'll go ahead and bolt it down, and then shape it a little bit with it in place. The bolt hole squashed in some, so I'll hammer that back out where it should be.
that helped the shape a little. Now it needs to flex inward. That bit's pretty good now. I want this choke cable bracket positioned so it'll point the cable right at the choke lever. And I want the plug wire clamp rotated so it's square with the world. This floor is intentionally not level because there's a floor drain nearby. So I have this board shimmed up so it's pretty close to level because I want to put oil in it next. The book says these four horse engines hold about half a quart. So I'm looking at how much is in the bottle first. And when I get close, I'll go by the dipstick. I'm ready to put the engine in the frame, so first you gotta pull the spark plug. That muffler looks like it's in the right place with the 3 inch pipe nipple. I might leave that one instead of changing it to a 2 inch like the original was. On these tractors, you want to make sure the exhaust pipe is against the frame when you tighten the engine bolts, so when you put the exhaust clamp on, it won't be on a bind. Now I'm going to take advantage of the spark plug access hole. I already wire brushed this exhaust clamp with the nuts and washers. The washers that were on here were the wrong size, so I have two flat washers and lock washers that are used, and I'll put those on it.
Now back to the throttle and choke cables. The choke cable turned out pretty good. It moves easily. I'm going to put that on like it is. The throttle cable's not good enough yet. It's still hard to move. And I've been looking at this bulge in the casing here. That shouldn't be there. It might be a repair that needs attention. Or maybe a big rust ball that's gumming up the whole thing. So I'm going to take it apart and look at that. First I'll put the choke cable in since it's ready. It needs to go through the nut and washer right behind the dash. And then it has to go through this round hole in the hood support. And then back through this elongated hole at the bottom of the hood support. I'm going to move this down and get the nut and washer on. And I want to let it rotate to where it wants to before I tighten it up. I want the clamp to hold the cable directly below the choke lever hole so the cable goes on the left side of the mounting bracket hole. Yeah, this is not going to work. The carburetor has the wrong type of linkage on it. So that's not the original carburetor. If you put the cable in the only hole there is, it wouldn't be able to pull down on it. Because that hole's over the shaft, not to the left of the shaft where it needs to be. So that carb needs to have an arm with a hole over here somewhere. Here's the proper choke arm for a cable operated choke, where the cable moves vertically to move it. Here's a new replacement carburetor with a universal arm. It has both holes and the thumb lever for any application. I'm thinking I need to make mine look more like this one. Okay, I was trying to make it look like this. But it turned out looking like this one. That's pretty close. Yeah, that took an hour and a half, but if I showed the process, it would have taken up the rest of the video. The hole needs to be the proper distance from the shaft, and on the proper angle from the shaft. So if you're going to try that, don't make a piece with a hole and try to weld it in position. You need to make the piece oversized without a hole, Weld it on, then drill the hole in the right place. The last step is to grind down the outside so it looks like it was the right size in the first place. I got the carburetor back on there. So now I'm back to the same place I was a few hours ago. Except this time it should work.
the clamp needs to hold the cable on the left side of the hole there's a notch inside of these cable clamps you want to squeeze that round part so the notch lands in the groove of the cable jacket if that notch is in the groove of the cable jacket you can rotate the clamp around the cable to make adjustments because it moves up and down like a nut on a screw thread I try to use all the old parts but this screws getting replaced because the slots wallered out When I push the choke in on the dashboard, I want this choke lever to be all the way open. And it's not. So I need to move the cable up a little bit. Maybe two turns. Okay, that's it. It works freely and the choke opens all the way. This is the kill switch wire, so it plugs into the switch under the hood. I need to make sure the wire doesn't interfere with anything like the throttle linkage or the spark plug wire. There's a number of different bumps in this in a mostly random pattern. This has a flat wire around it. Looks like it might have been a staple. Well, there's the brown rust color. It looks like it's brown mud though, not turned into solid rust yet. So I may have gotten it just in time. A waterproof jacket on a cable like this only works if both ends are sealed water tight, which is almost impossible to do. I should go back and cut the cover off of the choke cable too. I have the cable clamped in this old frying pan. Since the bottom's all bowed out and it don't sit flat, I'll use this old cake pan as a base and it'll sit where I want. Well, it's been sitting for a few hours. I'm going to brush off the chunks, dry it off, and maybe wire brush it. Well, this is looking promising. I'm going to spray it with WD-40. And 
And I'm going to put it in this plastic bag overnight to soak. And I'll add some more WD-40. Well, it's been soaking for a day and a half. The fluid in the bag's dirty, so some of the crud came out of there. It works easier than it did before. Not as smooth as I'd like, but I'm going to use it. It might get easier after it's used for a bit. I can see some pitting on the outside now since it's cleaner, so there's going to be some rust damage on the inside too. Just like the other cable, the nut and washer go right behind the dash. Then the cable has to go through this hole in the hood support. And it goes back through this elongated hole on the bottom. I'm going to put the nut on to hold it in place, but leave it loose so it can rotate a bit. At this end, the outer jacket will clamp to the lower arm, and the cable goes into one of the holes on that round part. This clamp goes on the cable first. Make sure it's turned the right way to hold the cable under the hole. To get an idea of where this clamps on, I make sure the throttle knob is pushed in all the way. And down here, make sure the disc is rotated as far as it'll go that same direction. Then I'll pick the farthest hole that the cable could reach if it were mounted. Now I'll line up the clamp with the mounting hole, and that's about where it's going to be. When you squeeze the clamp, try to make the round part round again. Because there's a tang in there that'll find the groove of the cable jacket. And it should lock in place, but screw up and down the cable jacket when you turn it. Then I'll pick the farthest hole that the cable could reach if it were mounted. Everything should be in the idle position at that point. The way to think about it is I'm trying to synchronize two things here, the cable and the engine. The cable is in the idle position when it's extended, and the engine is in the idle position when that disc is rotated clockwise. So that's where they both need to be when I bolt them together with this clamp here. It's probably not right yet, but it should be close. I'm going to try to describe what I'm looking for when I do this. The cable clamp screw is tight now, and the throttle knob is pushed all the way to the idle position. But if I push on this arm here, you can see the carburetor is not in the idle position. To get it to the idle position, the cable would have to push up farther. So I'm going to move the cable up some so it pushes up farther. I'll take off this clamp, rotate it to screw it down the cable by two turns, and when it bolts back on, the cable will be a little bit higher. Try to position the clamp so the cable's not on a bind. And you can rotate the clamp to move the cable slightly for fine adjustment if you have to. Sorry, my hand was in the way when I did that. 
I think it's pretty good now. After you make an adjustment, pull the throttle cable out and push it back to idle, because that's where it's going to be during operation. Then when you push the linkage to the idle position, the throttle should touch the idle speed screw and it shouldn't spring back. If the spring pulls it back towards you, the cable won't let the engine slow down to idle. Work the throttle a few times to make sure it's repeatable. When the linkage can flop like that, it ensures me it's not on a bind, and the governor will be able to control the speed properly, provided the governor arm is adjusted properly. The cable should never be pushing the linkage against the screw. That's the governor's job. When the engine starts, the internal flyweights will push the linkage towards the idle position. That's assuming the governor arm's adjusted right. I didn't change that on this one because it ran good. Maybe I'll have to make a video about governor adjustment later. Okay, that's where I want it. Then I should be able to control it safely when it starts. I still need to tighten the nut behind the dash. I'm going to put a new fuel line on here with some new hose clamps. That's what that hole's for there, but the original fuel fitting in the carburetor would have pointed down. Then the fuel line didn't stick out the side like this. I might change that later. Alright, I'm out of time again, so that's as far as I'm going this time, and here's what it looks like. I'll probably try to start it next time, but I think I'll put the drive belt system on first. Then when I start it, I can drive it. that's it